<clears throat> the man told us he can't tell his prognosis yet because we're still waiting. But she has some kind of syndrome in her blood. But the syndrome winds up being a good thing. Because if this stuff don't work, she can go with another treatment. So there's, there's, there's two options. Right. So, uh, let's, let's pray. Father, we love you, Lord. We praise your name. We thank you for your grace and mercy. We thank you for this night. We thank you for this opportunity to be in your house to worship you in the spirit of the truth. And Lord, we thank you for a, a wonderful, wonderful turnout, Lord. And we're going to have good fun with you today. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Church said, Amen. 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 Oh, David, did you hear about Mary? Where? Oh yeah, I call her and talk to her. She normally I find out this stuff I'm at the hospital. She wouldn't do it because of Bethany. Let me tell y'all something. Just because Bethany's sick don't mean I'm still not I still can't do the role of pastor. Y'all call me. Well, I was on the If if look, if if I'm stuck somewhere with Bethany in a treatment or something, I'll tell you. But other than that, I'll be there. Alright, I'll be there. She, she failed. Oh, yeah, she's tough. I mean, I All right, we're talking about God's purpose. I, I was, you know, we've been talking about, we've been talking about uh, Hitler. Well, uh, Hitler even showed me more of being like Satan. You ever feel like Satan? Tore you up and tore you up again. And this what tore you up again. The people that he felt betrayed him, he would literally hang them. He, he had a cinema photographer to to film the hanging. And after they got through with the hanging, he would actually revive them and hang them again. He killed them twice. He wanted, he wanted to experience death twice. Why would he do that? He wanted them to experience death twice. That's bad. That's bad, bad. That's what you call a mean person. That's a mean man. <laughs> That's somebody that was trying to intimidate others. Mm-hmm. Okay. Here we go. This is going to be, we're going to talk about some of the attributes that we should have. If you're going to fulfill God's purpose in your life, remember, there, there's the specific purpose that God has in your life. But remember, don't get destination disease. Destination disease is when you got your eye on the end. And you mess all the stuff between here and there. Okay? You can't mess all the stuff that's happening in the front of you by looking so far ahead. It's okay to have goals, but don't be goal conscious. Enjoy the journey. So here right, we go. If you look too far ahead, you do like we did that night. I told Frank, I said, you better watch them deer up there and the bear is <laughs> Okay, there you go. That's a good example. That's a real good example. That was a true story, too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, like Ron says, Ron says some of his true stories he has to make up. It's not that one. Okay. <laughs> no, that's what was happening. The bread, he was looking ahead and didn't see what was in front of him. He oh. got in a wreck party line. Oh, you all right? Oh, he's good. Dang. Soda to Looking ahead too far ahead. Yes, it's a 2002 model. They looked at it wrong when they told it. Oh, yeah. That's right. The Toyota? I'm going to fix it. I done found junk car before. Okay. I'm going to put it back together. That's what happened to the Christ. I'll put it back together. They, they, they totally we're, we're so it. Okay, so this, so this is not the, the specific. This is general. This is general. Every Christian should exhibit this. Okay, some of you can sing better than others. Some of you can play music better than others. Some of you may can preach. Some of you can teach. Not everybody can do all that. But here's something everybody needs to do. This is everybody. Somebody say everybody. Everybody. All right, there you go. So here we go. When we give our life to Christ, we give our lives to God, we begin, He begins a work within us to make us more godly. All right? Uh, this isn't that time where somebody goes, well, that's what a Christian is like. I don't want to be one. I'm not talking about that stuff. Or I thought you were a Christian. And people say that too when they get upset with you. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about true godliness. God does this transforming work through the presence of the Holy Spirit that... He has sent back. Remember, he said, I'm going to go away, but I'm going to send another comforter. The other comforter is the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is what makes us and helps us be holy. You can't do it on your own. It's impossible. So, developing his more attributes within us. Now, here, we need to cooperate with him. How many How many has ever not cooperated with God? <laughs> All right. Okay. So, Cooperate with him by 
purposing in our hearts to become Christ-like, or you can just put beside Christ-like, more like Him. That's all it is. More like Him. You know, there's a lot of people I'd like to be like, but the person I really need to be like is Christ. All right? So here's how you be more like Him. Everything you go through, I started sending out Mighty Army. Uh, I'm not sure if I didn't send it out yesterday. I'm trying to remember. I sent out so many. You sent one out today. That was very good. Okay, well, that's why I believe in what he said or something. Oh, yeah. Don't worry about what he's already handled. That's right. Don't worry about what he's already handled. Uh, but but his, Daddy. He, Daddy. Doesn't, he doesn't put us where we want to be. He puts us where, we, where he needs us to do what we're supposed to do. So, for those God foreknew, meaning he already knows you from the beginning, from the, from the beginning, from the end, the ending from the beginning, and also predestined. Now, let's, let's just go right here and stop for a second. Sometimes people say that, uh, like Calvinists, they say that God's already decided who's going to go to heaven, who's going to go to hell, and there's nothing you can do to change it. That is not true. It can't be. If it is, the Word of God is not true. The Word of God preaches free will. Okay? Now, because it preaches free will, then if he foreknew and predestined, what does that mean? For new means he's already he already knew what you were going to do. He already knew ahead of time. We don't. None of us know what the end is going to be like. We think we do, but we don't. But God already knows what the end is going to be like. So because he already knows what the end is going to be like, he foreknew, then he predestined us to be conformed in the likeness of his son. He's already set up the things that's going to happen. Just like uh, I thought when I went through this with Mama all those years, that Mama's diabetes and cancer and all that, I said, that this is enough, Lord. Then I went through it with Beverly, and I'm thinking, her death, I'm thinking, come on, Lord, okay, we got this now. Let's, let's, let's take a little ride here. Let's, fly, let's coast out the rest of the way. And, and now here, this is Bethany. You know, uh, I had no idea two months ago I'd be talking about her and cancer. It just didn't even appear in my mind, okay? But God already knew, so God was preparing us what came and through what's going on he prepares even more so in all of our lives think about it he wants us to be look he wants us to be more like his son all right so here's what here's here's universal y'all say y'all say everybody this is for everybody everybody. <laughs> everybody first he wants you to be holy holy or sanctified means to set apart from sin for him. To set apart from something and unto something. From sin and unto him. So here it is, 1 Peter 1.15. Just as he called you to be holy, so be holy in all that you do. Again, remember remember Sunday. Uh, 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 follow peace with all men, and the holiness about which no man shall see the Lord. That word follow peace means to be, use redemptive language. To always be thinking about how to restore relationships, not tear them up, and do it in a way that pleases God. Holiness. Do it in a way that pleases God. So here it is. We're holy. We are to please God in all that we do. So be holy in all that you do. If you take a note, you just put please God in all you do. That's that's kind of simple. You know, please Him. Since He is holy, He is set apart from sin and having and 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 so He's He. We are not to sin because he doesn't sin. Now, now, how do you not sin? Next <laughs> way. How do you not sin? <laughs> here's how you. Here's how how it works. Everybody in here is going to sin. It's impossible. We're going to sin, which means to miss the mark. We're going to miss the mark. But the Bible says, if, if we sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all our unrighteousness. So I lose you, just bring it to him. Keep your account short. Okay, Lord, I blew it today. I need your help. Or if you blew it right then, if you can think about it, if you can calm down and go, Lord, I blew it right That was not good. You know, then just ask him to help you and he will and he'll cleanse you and so the way you stay holy with God is keep short accounts, keep short accounts, and keep a close eye on your own life. Am I living a life? Think, I have to ask myself this all the time. Am I living a life that pleases Him? 
It doesn't mean what I'm wearing and what I'm doing and blah, blah, blah. Some of that old timer legalism stuff is talking about am I living a life that pleases him? Think about it. Your kids, you know when your kids are pleasing you, didn't you? You know, don't you? Y'all know your kids, and you know when they're not. Okay? And you and I'll be honest with you, your kids know when they're not. And you know, even as old as mine and yours are, they can still displease us. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, you know not. <laughs> oh, yeah. DC told me the other day he was 30. I thought DC was 33. Let me say it was 35. 36, what'd he say? 38, I thought. 38? Okay. See, I can't keep up with it. So you're older than you thought. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's forgot several birthdays. <laughs> I'm 58. 20 years old. Subtract 20. Yeah. And my daddy, and my daddy, my daddy's so old when Lord said let there be light, he's the one that flipped the switch. <laughs> Alright, you know about it, I know, nobody has to beat me over the head, I know when I'm not pleasing God, <coughs> we know it, it's, it's the Holy Spirit within you, we grieve the Holy Spirit when we sin, and when we grieve the Holy Spirit, you feel that sadness from God, you feel it, God puts something in all of us, even the people there's the law of God. There's also the, this the law of God. But he also said he wrote law in our hearts. And let me tell you something. People know all over the world you do not kill. Oh, you're killing up. I'm saying so. You do not kill. They know, all these, they know these laws. They're in their hearts. Anyway, for people, it's, it's there. So when you grieve the Holy Spirit, or when you grieve God, you'll grieve the Holy Spirit. And when you do, you'll feel that grieving on your in your own body. So you need to. Ask God quickly, forgive me, and let me move on, God. All right? Like you said not too long ago, where it says you're not supposed to kill. Well, during wartime, you said this fellow here didn't want to do that because it was a, he knew it was a sin. And I don't remember what else you told, you told said it was in the Bible. There's three exceptions for murder. See, right. he said thou shalt not murder. Murder. But you, there's three exceptions in the Old Testament for killing. And that was capital punishment, defense of your home, and defense of your country. Wartime. And so you take those three. So there was killing because Joshua, all these guys, they were killing people all the time. Okay. Lots, of them. Oh, lots of them. So, so that's the killing. And so when you understand there's a difference. If I go murder somebody and, I'm, and I've got an act of war or I'm taking care of my homeland or taking care of my family... The other night, and I'm married to an Italian. The other night, my dogs were barking. So then at 1 o'clock in the morning, I said, see what's going on. I get up, and I walk outside, just, and there's no lights on. I got, I've got area lights that come on by themselves. There's no lights on. I have no idea what's going on, but there's no, I don't see anything. I go back to bed. And so I find out the next day, I said, well, we, we got some decent sleep last night. I still feel kind of tired. She said, you got sleep. She said, I went out at, at 2 o'clock this morning with a flashlight looking. <laughs> what was it? I think a cat had run through, and all the dogs were barking at it. And one night, one night she got me. She said, "You need to go out there and see what's going on." And I said, "What is it?" She says, "I've already been out there. I can't see anything. My nose out there." So send you. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. It's like I, I called the sheriff's department in Nash County one night, and I said they're shooting across the street from my house. She said. Is anybody hurt? I said, you need to send a deputy over there. Find out how you go. <laughs> well, I did go out one night. Linda, Linda sent me out, and I think it was a bear in the woods. I don't walk out and see what's going on, and I come around the corner in the dark on Possum Drive, and I walk into this big, dark body. My heart stopped. <laughs> And the thing was, it was my neighbor and his body. His he stopped too. When he saw me, he he saw a big dark body. <laughs> they locked into each other. Woo! I said, after I calmed down, he calmed down from the 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 the, the, the 
You know the excitement. How long did it take you to get your hair back down? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't, see? <laughs> so, so uh, he, he said it was a bear, and we saw where the bear was at. Okay, let's get back over here. Righteous. Now, again, there's stuff you've been taught from a child, you know, and there's stuff you, certain denominations teach in a different way. And honestly, they'll get you so confused. It's like, if you try to find out when the Lord's coming back, you can look at all these maps and all these things, and some tell you it's going to be pre-trip, some post-trip, some mid-trip. You know, some say it's going to be a trip, not come at all. Before any of the tribulation or after tribulation, it's just going to just blend in to him. You know, so you got all these maps and all these things. And can you see the Lord you know, looking down and Jesus saying, when are you going to send me back for us? I don't know. I'm trying to figure these maps out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know when to send you. Okay, the Is same way. The Bible will tell you exactly when he's coming. What's that? When you think not. Okay. Okay. He's going to tell Jesus, uh, if he asked him when, when he's going to send me, he said you'll be the first one. That's right. Okay. So holy, righteous. Again, here's a good word. It means absolute good. Absolute good. Does it mean you don't mess up? No. Does it mean you don't sin? No. But now we're talking about a condition. Well, here it is. Watch this. Righteous are you, O Lord, and your laws are right. Psalm 119, 137. Since he is righteous, everything he does is right, even on behalf he grants righteousness to me. Meaning, my righteousness is not my own righteousness, because I can't do it. How many in here can how many here can go one week without sinning? Raise your hand. <laughs> can't even go an hour. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'm gonna say how many can go a week? How many can go a day? The longest I've ever been was twice in my life when I was knocked out for a few minutes. <laughs> Were you dreaming? <laughs> no, 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 I wasn't dreaming when I was knocked out in time. And when Linda was knocked out, she was one of y'all down in Florida. Do you know what? Now, I have to tell this. This is what I'm saying. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I think it was Monday, Monday morning after we got honey. And I heard Dudley. I heard Dudley in the living room going through gas, the gas drawers. This is at four o'clock in the morning. Thank you. Just going through every drawer, and then I, I just waited, waited. Then the next thing I heard, he was in the kitchen making coffee, and you know, doing all this stuff. So I get up, and I'm walking in there, and I'm saying, "I got your message." He said, what? I said, I got your message. He said, about what? What? I didn't send a message. I said, I well, what were you looking? And I heard him say in the living room, I, I can never find it. And, and I knew he was blaming uh, me. I, that I had moved I whatever he was looking for. That's why he was going to all the drawers. I can never find anything. That's what I heard. I said, what is it you were looking for? What? I did not move anything. What did I move? I said, you did too. I heard you. I didn't say that. You must have been dreaming. I said, dreaming? I heard you say that. Did he ever admit to it? I was dreaming. You were dreaming? I was dreaming. Evidently, because he didn't. I'm not believing this time. This time. Y'all made me think about something, though. You know, 
Remember to tell you about the time I went to bend down and, and food line to get some peanuts and on the very bottom and I could barely get my knee back before I started taking that yeah. glucose to me and I could barely get down and, a, and several young guys come up and said, <laughs> said uh, that's okay buddy, we'll get them for you. <laughs> Linda was having a fit. I was, I couldn't believe it. I said, I mean, I, went, I, I, I was happy they were going to help, but that way they did it was like I'm some old dude. So so Bethany's, Bethany's chair in the living room is just a big old armchair. And because her back hurts her, we went to, we went to get her a, a reclining chair. And so we went went on the yard sale site and went through and we found a chair that we liked. And it was on Wichita Beach Road, way up high, one of those, you know, two-story up on stilts. And so we go to get it. I go up there and the guy says, I said, let's go. And, he, and for some, I don't know, maybe because he saw this. He said, I think I'll take it down by myself. I sit down two flights of stairs. And then his wife says, do you want some help? What that sweet of and I said, hey, y'all, am I here? That's like, that's like the first time that they go, we gave you the senior discount. And you're thinking, but I'm not there yet. The first time I got a senior discount was the, the day just before my mama died. I was 38, and I was uh, I just left her. I'd been up with her all night, and I stopped by, by, by Burger King to get some breakfast. And I walked up, and I was feeling bad. I'd been up for days. And I walked in there, 38 years old, and when I go to get my breakfast, I looked down at it, I said, something don't seem right, the price don't seem right. She gave me a senior discount, 38 years old. I said, I must really be looking bad. <laughs> I got a haircut, what little bit I got the other day, and the lady uh, told me how much it was. I said, uh, pardon me? Senior discount since, like I said, since I was 38. <laughs> I hadn't turned down a single one. I hadn't turned down one either. All right. They don't ask me, I ask them. <laughs> also, so, so God wants us to be set apart from Him. So watch. I want to please Him. Number one, I want to please Him in all I do. Number two, I cannot, y'all need to think about these things when you get up in the morning. I cannot live. A life that pleases you by myself. I have to have your help. Alright, I have to have your help. Number three, just and fair. Righteous and, righteousness and justice are the foundations of your throne. Psalm 189, 14. Since he is just, I know that all his rules, all his judgments for everyone, including me, are fair in his eyes. In his eyes. Not mine. In his what does the Lord require of you to act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God? So God wants us, since he's righteous and just, he wants us to walk righteously and justly. And look, love mercy. What is mercy? When people deserve to be slapped behind the head, you pull back and go, no, I'm not going to slap behind the head. All right? And to walk humbly is, even though it hurts my feelings that I'm going to let them get, get away with this, I'm going to let them get away with it because God's got this. And I'm going to act justly. I'm going to act in a way that pleases God. So remember that. that, this, that this, and I can't do this without his help. It's impossible. I cannot do this without his help. You're looking like you're grinning like you and say something. Go ahead. <laughs> you're grinning. That, no, when you said popped upside the head, reminds me of, um, what was his name <laughs> on uh, NCIS? Gibbs. 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 Pop, yeah. Proby and popping everybody back in the head uh, okay. when he walks by. Okay. Mm -hmm. Calling them Proby. Yeah. Get their attention. Yeah. I have a school teacher that taught me, Miss Rachel. She had fingers that were a yard long and just as skinny as a snake. She catch this and she thump you behind the ear. Yeah. I'm telling you, that hurts. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. We had a summer school teacher that and a yardstick. And if you talked, he didn't care where he was standing. That yardstick went. <laughs> All 
My grandma had a long switch, and she in that living room, she had nine ch kids, and they sat around that living room, and she, daddy said she was so good with that switch, she could pop it right in the ear. Okay, remember, if people see you doing this, they're going to know, look, they're going to know that you're, you're being like Christ. Okay? So, holy or pure, set apart for his service, you got to have his help to please him. Righteous. My righteousness is not of me. My righteousness is filthy rags. How many have remember me telling about when he says our righteousness is as filthy rags? How many remember me telling about what filthy rags you're talking about? Yeah, we know all about that. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. Just and fair. Merciful. Compassionate. The Lord is gracious and righteous. Righteous. Our God is full of compassion. Psalm 116, 15. Since he's merciful, we know that he has compassion for us and each one of us, even when we fail him. How about that? How many's, how many's failed him lately? <laughs> Everybody can raise your hand. Yeah. Matter of fact, you can raise both hands. Hold every up. day. Yeah. Every day. There's something I do. That I, how many times every day do you go, oops? Mm. Sometimes it's not what I do fails him, it's what I don't do and That's the sin, that's the sin that's of that's omission. The, that's the biggest the sin of omission can be worse than the sin of commission. What about when you think something and you know that you should have thought that? Well, sometimes you can't help thinking because thoughts run randomly in your brain. And sometimes subconsciously your body's dealing with things or your mind's dealing with things. And there comes a time when a thought runs through your mind like, uh, I, you know what, why don't you go over there and slap him? Okay? So watch this. I can't, think about this right here. I can't stop a bird from landing on my head but I can't stop it from building a nest. Mm -hmm. So, the same way, I can't stop some of these random thoughts because they will come to you, okay? So if you if, if God's going to kill us for our thoughts, we're all dead. Oh. I was say. We're all dead. Yeah. All of us. All of us. So look, none of us have a chance. Sometimes, sometimes what we think is our own thought is devil whispering in our ear. Oh, yeah. So, so right. remember... It's not always... I totally believe. So it's your thoughts. Don't let, don't let, don't, don't let, because you thought something that you're going to, you know, that, that you're going to die and go to hell because you're thinking something. No, you can't. Remember, subconsciously, your brain, you know, the one part of your body that never goes to sleep is your brain. Mm -hmm. That's why you dream. That's why you, you keep moving, why you keep breathing. Except for there was this one blonde, she went in to get her hair cut. She was wearing earphones. And the barber said, you need to take those earphones off. And the blonde said, I can't. He says, yeah, you need to take them off. I know the blondes here. Please don't be offended. I'm just telling the blonde joke. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, look. And so she said, sir, I really can't take these headphones off. He said, you had to. I'm going to cut your hair. So he took them off. And in a few minutes, she passed out and fell on the floor. And he said, wow, I didn't realize that. And so he picked up the earphones and said, what in the world was it saying? And he picked up and said, breathe in. Breathe out. <laughs> I, 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 told that, I, I told that to tell you this. Your brain is working, telling you to breathe in, breathe out. Your brain is your brain is always look, you may see something and it may be months down the road and all of a sudden you start thinking about it. And you go, Why am I thinking about it now? Honestly, it's been in your mind and your mind's been working it. Even back then. But you didn't really think about it. It wasn't, brought, it wasn't brought to the front of your brain until you haven't seen something to remind you. It's brought to the front of your brain. So, you can't stop these thoughts. There's some random thoughts that I wish I could not think. But you know what? When it starts coming, I just go, stop it. Stop it. That's why I pray silent. I don't want the devil to know what I want. <laughs> well, that's good. That's good. All right, ready? So... On him. It, no, don't, it don't matter if, if the devil knows what you want. Rub it in. <laughs> okay, look. So just as he extends mercy to us, here's the hard part. Just as he extends mercy to us, we are to extend mercy to others when they fall. Be merciful, just your father's merciful. Remember, remember the guy, the guy that owed uh, so many pence and the guy come to him and he owed him so many pence and and uh and 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 he he first he owed he owed he owed like uh 
I don't know, several million dollars. And he went to the man and said, I can't pay you. And the guy said, okay, I'm going to cut you some slack. I'll forgive you what you owe. And then he had a friend come to him to owe $7.50 in American money versus the biblical money. He owed $7.50. He said, I don't have it. Can you have mercy on me? And he said, no, I'm going to lock you up. And he had him locked up and put him in a debtor's prison. And when the guy that forgave the guy millions of dollars said, you're going to put another guy in jail for $7.50? He said, hold on. And he come back and So, again, a lot of times we think that, that us extending mercy is actually causing them, letting them off the hook. Not necessarily. Because the Bible says when you do good to those that's done bad to you, what you do is you heap fires of coal on their head, meaning you burn their conscience. Because you're actually doing something good for somebody that knows they've done something bad. So, I just rather let God handle it, and I just like you know, throw some coals on the fire. All right, long-suffering, patient. Here's my hard one. I mean, this if I got if I got my hard one to deal with, this is it right here. Cause I, you know, uh, I, I I just like to see it go ahead and move and get on with it. And sometimes I don't want to get moving, and get on with it, and it's just rough. Okay. It's amazing how a pen start writing on patience. <laughs> <laughs> God's got a sense of humor. <laughs> okay. So, long-suffering, patient. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. He is patient with you, not waiting, well, not wanting anyone to perish, but to come to, come to repentance. Since he's long-suffering with us, I know he's patient with me during my spiritual progress. Because let me ask you this. How many, how many spirits, think about everybody be honest, how many spirits you think that you're where you need or where you are supposed to be? Right now, you're 100% lined up where God, how God wants you to be spiritually. Right now, you have no growth. This is it. I've got it, God. I'm right where you want me to be, how you want me to be. I don't have any mistakes. i got it. <laughs> you know what? God you know the one with your hand up. <laughs> it's like when a teacher said a teacher in Sunday school said if you think if you're going to if, if you believe you're going to hell stand up the boy, little boy in Sunday school said, stood up and she said why are you standing up I said well you were standing up I don't want you to be the only one <laughs> alright God knows how we all need to grow we all grow at different rates there's going to be certain things that some of y'all grow faster than, than your spouse does. There's going to be some other things where your spouse grows faster than you grow. Okay? Because it's just, it's just the nature of things. Alright? Now, we are to be, it says, be completely humble and gentle, be patient, bearing with one another in love. Why does, somebody tell me what bearing one another with love is. Bearing with one another, not bearing one another, bearing with one another. Putting somebody, up whatever she does. <laughs> you have to use that set thing. That's not why it's his dog house. <laughs> That's right. And he's gonna be living in another. Yeah. That means yes, it means putting up with other people's shortcomings because I can promise you, guarantee you, one hundred percent that every one of us have shortcomings. Yep. And every one of us will get on the other person's nerve. I don't care how much you love a person, they can get on your nerves. And the more you love them, the more they can get to you. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, well, I have a habit of telling the grandkids, they'll say, well, uh, Grandma, how are you doing? I'll go, I'm so ill, I can't stand myself. <laughs> right before I moved out That's here, ill. I had a two-bedroom trailer with a bedroom on each end of the house. And if I got mad for myself, I'd go to the other end of the house. Stay three or four days because I could get along with me and then move back to the bed. A lot of times that, when there's something that somebody does that gets on our nerves, we fail to realize we do it ourselves. Mm -hmm. That's right. And I've learned through that that since God is trying to get my attention. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because remember, remember, remember Sunday? What you see is about aggravation in other people. A lot of times they're mirrors, and what you see aggravating you and them is actually is actually something that you that needs to be worked on. And so I'm sitting there getting aggravated with somebody, thinking, you know what? If I work on me, and maybe maybe that wouldn't be bothering me so bad. Now, a philosopher, I don't know if it was Mark Twain or who, 
said that uh, we tend to recognize in others the things we least like about ourselves. That's right. That's why you know, never let your left hand know you're watching right hand. <laughs> <laughs> one again and I wonder if anybody has anything to say or can think about something about each one of these I want you to pipe up and say it no, the last one, now we got some more next week okay, wise 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 wise, you know somebody told me the other, somebody told me the other day said uh, said they were trying, they were actually trying to, uh, trying to somebody in my family was trying to trying to stomp me and because they didn't like what I, how I was handling a certain situation and they said, I remember so I remember one time, I knew a man one time that, that had guts. He didn't even use the word guts, but had guts like you wouldn't believe it. He would have took care of this. And I said, that guy with guts now has wisdom to go along with it. That's a good answer. And he goes, oh. I said, sometimes you put up the guns, sometimes you use the guns, sometimes you put them in your holster. And I said, and when you get older, you'll understand the difference. But until then, <laughs> fine, you think what you want to but I know that God gave me wisdom in this situation, and it's going to come out better if I let him handle it instead of me. You know? So, wise, perfect in choices. How many are your works, O Lord? In wisdom you made them all. The earth is full of your creatures, Psalm 104, 24. If any of you lacks wisdom, and this is a promise in trial, so when you're in trial, this is where this is talking about. If you're going through a trial, whether it be with your spouse, whether it be on your job, whether it be with your own self, if any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault. Now let me ask you a question. Has anybody ever come to you and wanted your help, especially your kids, but you couldn't help them without telling them I told you so? He gives generously without finding fault. Fall. No, that was one of those times where I thought that, but it didn't come out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and it'll be given to him. This and Daniel tickle me because Daniel will go, and then she both will just go, I won't say a word, and they'll go, Okay, Dad, say it. <laughs> I and I said, Say what? They said, Say it. I, said, I know what they're saying. I said, Say what? They said, Come on, Dad. Say, I told you so. I said, I don't need to. Okay. <laughs> don't it make you happy? <laughs> it makes me happy. You know, it makes me happy when, when like somebody asked me, I was at, I was at, at a doctor's office yesterday, and, and Bethany was back there for like two hours getting all these MRIs of her spine. And I'm sitting there, and there's a set of twins, and they're three years old. And they were just, they, they were having a ball. They were having a ball. And I tried to tell her, her parents, I said, look, it's okay. I said, now, what, how would you feel if, if they were just laying there here lethargic and, and it's not like everything was, you know, they just couldn't move? And she said, I wouldn't like that at all. I said, well, be thankful that you got some, has got some spirit. You know, that's fine. And, and, and again, uh, I got a chance to, to minister to them while all this was going on. But I'm going to tell you, uh, there was a, there was there was all kinds of things going on in that waiting room. All kinds of things. Not just not just stop. Not the, but the, the ones I had the most fun with were the two three year olds. They were awesome. I was having a problem with the thirty year olds. Yeah. And the forty year olds. And the fifty year olds. Amen. All right. So See, you remember when you boys were young? And they had done something wrong, and you really got on them really hard. And then you get thinking about it. I shouldn't have done that. I should go and tell them, but you can't really do that because... Well, it's okay to apologize. Yeah. You know, I was, I was a little hard on you, so here's what I do. I said, D.C. Daniel, I, was, I have to tell you something. I'm sorry that I was so hard. I'm, I'm not sorry that I disciplined you. I'm just sorry that I let flesh get in the way and I got too hard. I said, because next time you do it, I'm going to discipline you again. But hopefully I'll have enough 
wisdom that I won't discipline you above and beyond what you already need. So, but you're right. You did. I, get, I felt I felt so bad many a time after. I, I, oh, but they asked me to say they had those ladies. As they said, I was giving their kids candy. No way. Sure. <laughs> and she said, she said, uh, and I said, well, I got eight grandkids. She said, do you ever give your grandkids candy? I said, usually when they're getting ready to go home, I give them a lot. <laughs> and they said, what for? I said, it's called revenge. <laughs> for all the times they tore me up when they were little, no, my, my boys. Okay, so here we go. Holy. Somebody give me something about holy. Set apart for him. Pleasing God. Anybody got anything? Ladies, y'all just came from a mess. Y'all had this paper well, eaten up. One thing I try to do, and I really try to stick by it, I try to treat people like the way I want to be. That's right, doing to others. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's good. That pleases God. That says yeah. a lot. Yeah. Okay, number two. That says it all. That says it all. Righteous, absolute good. I cannot be good without Him. Anybody got anything? What Dudley said fits that too. Kill whose dog? What Dudley said fits that too. I thought you said. <laughs> Where did you get that, David? I thought it said Dudley do 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 do. I thought you said who killed that dog too. I said who killed that dog? Yeah, I said kill whose dog? <laughs> Look, watch this. When you get this righteous part, here's what I want you to think about. How many times has, and we talked about it Sunday, has Satan said, you're not good enough? How many times? David. Time. Remember, my righteousness is not of me, it's of God. And let, let Satan try to take on God. It ain't going to work. So, just and fair. Act just and love mercy and walk humbly. Somebody give me something. Again. Again. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, we yeah. shot that dog. I did it on a dude, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think we all should strive to be fair with other people and you know yeah. and treat somebody as good as we as we're gonna be treated or or even better. You know. And not say so or act so but actually do it. Do it. That's yeah. right. Do That's it. Right. Not not say well I do Right. That's right. It's do. Yeah, it's like, like, like Yoda said, it's not try, it's only do. Do right? or do not. Mer or do or do not, yeah. Do not try. Merciful, compassionate. Well, I think that God knows that we're all going to fail. That's right. Oh, yeah. On a daily basis. That's right. But we are His children. That's right. Just like I did with my kids when they were coming along and making mistakes on a daily basis, I forgave them because I love them. Yeah. That's, That's right. good. And That's he's right. Gonna forgive us. If DC or Daniel, if DC or Daniel was climbing up a tree that I told them not to climb up and they're falling out of and they call for me, Daddy, I'm hanging on, please come help me. You think I'm gonna walk out there and ask him, well before I catch you, did you take out the trash? <laughs> did you clean your room? Did you do everything I told you to do? Why did you climb the tree anyway after I told you not to? No, I'm going to reach up because he's my son, and I'm going to take him, and I'm going to pull him down, and I'm going to make sure he's safe first. Then you kill him. Then I kill him. Yeah. <laughs> I think, you know, to me, there are just certain people that you're going to have to forgive. You know, and that's why That's right. <laughs> I tell you one thing. I think when you're talking about passion, um, merciful, is when I think of when I see older people or young people who are hurt. See, it's just give them a helping hand. Oh yeah. You know, just, just 
in any way you can, if it's just opening the door for them, or if it's, you know, if you see somebody that, you know, in the grocery line in front of you, they don't have enough money to pay for what they got. If you got it, give it, you know, help them. Because that's what we're all about. Oh, yeah. It's Being like compassionate, caring about somebody. I, I was riding down the road. I think I told y'all that I was riding the road down by the hospital the other, other Friday night. I was on the way to meet Linda. And, and I ride down the road, and I'm like 20th in line in cars. And I see this woman pushing a minivan out of the, where the stop was. She's pushing up toward the hospital. She's like, the door's open. She's pushing. Oh, my gosh. And, and people are going around her. Mm -hmm. They're not even terrible. stopping to help. They're driving around her. So when, yeah, I, fi so when I finally got it where I could get to her, I pulled up the hill to the orthopedic place. I jumped out of my car and I found somebody else to come out and help push. So I got there and, and so I was the guy. We told the lady, just hop on in the car. Just hop on the car. We got this. I said, now where are we going? <laughs> he said, we're going to that parking lot. <coughs> so we pushed it in the parking lot. And, uh, and of course, I just could not believe that this lady is pushing her van trying to get it out of the way at 5 o'clock traffic by the hospital and nobody Nobody cares. drove around her. I about saw 20 cars. I'm not kidding. Mm -hmm. Drive past her or around. I don't, not just drive past. Some had to actually drive around her. And I watched them rubberneck and just keep on going. I, I, couldn't, I thought by the time I got there, there'd be so many people I couldn't even help. No, by the time I got there, I'm glad I went. And I'm glad I jumped out and went to help them. I just, I just couldn't, you I couldn't see believe. You guy in the car pulled up and said, hey, lady, what we call you a wrecker? Uh, you're a wrecker. And then drove off. I tell you what, pushing the car is the hardest work I've ever done. It's some tough stuff now. It is. All right. So, uh, long suffering, patient. I think he's got something. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see her. Okay. I was just going to say, you're talking about the, uh, the stopping for the car. I think that sometimes we are led to help certain people, even if, even if it's out of our nature, or even if yes. it looks futile at this time. Yes. I had someone that, um, for years, I would see her out at the store, and she got in the habit of calling me mama, but I, for some reason, whenever she'd ask for a dollar, I would give her a dollar, and I would give her a ride. And I kept thinking to myself, why do you do that? Because I have other people that that I would turn down automatically. Uh -huh. I'd go, no, you need to go to work somewhere or whatever. That's, anyway, yeah. last year at, on Mother's Day, she straightened her life out several years ago and got off the street. Um, but last year on Mother's Day, she sent me the sweetest email letter <laughs> about how she appreciated that. That's awesome. <laughs> that, that makes you really feel good, doesn't it? Yes, it does. She said, you see me when other people did not see me when I was invisible to other people. I'll tell you one thing that's recently happened in the news that made me feel exactly the way you just described yourself. Mm -hmm. And I just saw this on the news. <clears throat> I don't know if y'all heard about the guy in the restaurant that mm -hmm. shot and killed, I think it was four people. Mm -hmm. And then the man jumped up and took that rifle away from mm -hmm. him and threw it behind the counter. Yep. That was a spontaneous act that young fellow did. And I think a lot of us are laughing that way. I was walking down the street one time in a foreign country, couldn't speak English and that sort of thing. And the fellow in front of me had two crutches and he was walking like this on his crutches and he fell down as I passed him. You know, and it is my nature to walk off and read somebody like that. But, somebody, but when I helped this guy up, he got him back on his feet and everything, he didn't have to say a word to me. All he had to do was look me in the face, and I could tell that he was just, you know, just the way he looked at me, I could tell that he was very thankful that I helped him mm -hmm. up like that. Because I don't think he could have got up by himself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The week before Christmas, Kendall Linton's grandmother, who lives in Pneuma, found a crumpled up piece of paper in the street. She'd gone to a hair appointment, and the lady was sick, so she went back out of the car and she said, these people just throw trash out. She picked it up and threw it in her car, not even thinking. Later that day, she found five thousand dollars in cash in there. Oh, really? And the guy had been to the bank, stuck it in his pocket. He was getting ready to go pay a guy for doing some work to it. And that, she and one of her friends managed somehow or another to find out who it was, and they called the man that, that you know, and, she's like, the bank, and they found out who, who had 
take the money out of the bank and he called the guy and told him. And he came the next day and got it. Now this is the week before Christmas and, and, and mind you, her uh, her second husband had been dead less than a year or so. Yeah. You know, how many people right before Christmas are going to find five they ain't cash money untraced or anything? He offered it to her, but she wouldn't take it. She wouldn't take it. There ain't no she way she did. Not Faye, take Faye would not take it. Faye would not take it. No. Faye's a good woman. Yeah. And that's proof. Yeah, that's proof. I mean, she didn't even want her, they did an article, and she didn't want her name in the article on the paper, but they said, we can't, we can't not do that. You know, we got to put your name in there. Yeah, that was a Christmas story. Yeah. All right, so yeah. patient, long suffering. Yeah. Long suffering. That's my yeah. I've been doing long. Yeah. He can't really, he can't really jump in the fire too. You both, y'all, want to talk to us? Y'all, 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 y'all two guys just did a film in the weeds. Y'all just held hands and went over the curve. <laughs> Be sure the same no, it's not. not, not that no, that's not. He's speaking at the mall. this way. I got something for you. Some good stuff. David will tell you. I'll take some good stuff. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I give yeah, uh, Stephen. You've been a very strong inspiration. And thank you so much. You're, 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 you're awesome. Okay. Long suffering and patience. Sometimes, you know, sometimes it's really hard to be bearing with one another. I told Beth the other day, she still kept, I kept asking her, asked her 20 times not to do this, and she kept doing it. And bless her heart, one side of her body's hurting so bad. And so I, I said, okay, I'll tell you what, dear, I know you're hurting, and she was limping. And I said, I'll tell you what, if you do it again, I'm going to put my foot up the good side. <laughs> and she got laughing. I said, you know I'm not going to hurt you, girl. I said, but well, come on now, cut your dad some break. You know, cut your mom and dad both break. You know, uh, but uh, bear one another with love. Sometimes it takes a lot to keep your mouth shut when you really don't want to. And sometimes it takes a lot to put up with somebody while they're in the middle. See, 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 see God says that we that we go through, when we're not being conformed, it's going to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. They were transformed, listen to, listen carefully. They were transformed is metamorphosis. Okay, now watch this. In order for a caterpillar to become a butterfly, it, when it gets in its cocoon, it liquefies. It totally liquefies. Because it's got to change its shape from that big old fat uh, uh, caterpillar to that beautiful butterfly. And how in the world does it go from a little skinny butterfly, big old wings, from a great big fat, juicy uh, caterpillars? Because inside the cocoon, there's a it, it actually melts, it liquefies. Now, and this is all done in the dark. Now, every last one of us, during many periods of our life, in certain areas of our life, or maybe in all areas of our life, we're gonna we're gonna be in that little cocoon. Okay? We're gonna be and it's gonna be a liquefied. We're gonna be changed so much that when we get at the other end of it, it's gonna be such a metamorphosis, it's gonna be such a change that everybody's gonna see it. The problem is the people that are with us while we're going through that change, part of it they can't see because it's being done in the dark. It's in the cocoon. But when you're with that person, it's not easy. Okay? So if you're gonna be long suffering somebody, as a pastor, there's people that that uh, when I pastored in Williamston, over half the church was former drug addicts and prostitutes and drug dealers. And those guys would come in and sing praise and worship and go out and fight like cats and dogs. But that's just Doodle Hill. That's Doodle Hill. <laughs> But I'm just telling you, is they were tough. They were tough. They were. They just. They loved God, but they just still had that in them. And I watched God transform these people. But as God's transforming them, somebody had to be long suffering and patient with them, while that transformation was taking place. Because some said these religious folks would not have had anything to do with them. You know why? They're saying, if you can't be perfect, then we don't want you. There's people that come in, and there was one day I was, I was preaching preaching at Williamston. No, Williamston. I was preaching in Benson, and. And 
we had a packed out church that Sunday, <clears throat> and a guy came in the very back of the church. He had on some cut off shorts, and the legs weren't even even. And he had on a cut off t shirt. He come in, and he looked like somebody had combed his hair with a weed in And he stood at the back of the church. And I remember when I was preaching, and I was singing it. I got a feeling everything's going to be all right. I got a feeling everything's going to be all right. I got a feeling. And this guy comes walking into the church, and you hear the doors go creak, creak, and people are trying to look, and this looked like a wild man. And he's standing in the back. And I was talking about everything's going to be good in your past, your present, and your future. i got a feeling it's going to be okay. And he just looks, and nobody said a word to him. They were like, kind of scared of him. I said, well, come on in. Come on down here. Come on, find your seat. And, and so as he started, he went all the way to the very front and sat on the very front row. Nobody would talk. Everybody was kind of scared of him when he came walking down. He sat on the front row. And that sound, he was going, come on now. That's right. Come on. Come on. And in the middle of the sermon, he jumped up and said, i got to get saved now. And he ran out of the altar, and I couldn't get anybody to go pray with him. I was going to pray with him. I said, y'all come on. And everybody's still going. <laughs> and this guy, we prayed with him, and he said he was from a church of God in Coates, North Carolina. If you know where yeah. this is in Coates, he was in Coates. And, and he said that he'd gone out, he'd strayed from the Lord, and that weekend he'd rid of some bad things. And he said he was so ashamed of himself and he really got to do something for me. He knew he couldn't go back to his church because they would judge him. And he said, God, you're going to have to show me a place where I can go where somewhere I won't be judged. And he said, I was riding by, and I rode by your church. And he said, the Holy Spirit said, go in there now. And he said, I went in, and there you were talking about, i got a feeling everything's going to be all right. Your past, present, and future. It was really kind of cool. But you know what? He looked like a wild man that day. He came back on Wednesday night with a three-piece suit on. He was a businessman. Nobody knew that. But again, remember, you got to bear with one another because you don't know what somebody else is going through. You don't know what somebody else may be, may be going through in their own personal life or, or, or who they're trying to help or, or what they're doing or what they've had to give up to get where they're at. And so you got to be long-suffering and patient, especially when you got a friend or a neighbor or a spouse or a child that's in that cocoon stage because they're being liquefied. They're being totally transformed. And when they're being transformed, their life is going to be kind of mushy. See, Frank, he's obviously the one that's been, been the long-suffering one. Been the place Go ahead and dig out as much as you can now, brother. Uh, but you know, I was walking in the backyard the other day. He's trying to get out of the dog. Well, now, I was walking in the backyard the other day, and I heard something say, Hell, by mountain. And I looked all around. I didn't see nobody look. There's two cocoons up there in the trees. <laughs> Actually... He's been going through the rough time. It's because, and I just found out a lot of the reason why last Wednesday I found out my thyroid is not re is under reactor, and it's when I read up on it, studied up on it, it's it does Scary. terrible things to you. You don't even realize it unless you, you have a thyroid problem. problem. Nobody understands. Well, I didn't know I had it. They just found it. They just caught it. But I, all the I symptoms I've been seeing for the last year. <laughs> I've got a granddaughter that's just under diagnosis right now. She's like 12 years old. And they've been trying to figure out all her life what her problems are. And she just... But when they when they get you on the right level... Well, she'll check me out. For six weeks, I go for six weeks. So y'all be praying that I will be able to stay on the diets I've been reading about. My temper won't be, <laughs> and my nerves. Oh. My nerves have been going to pieces. I mean, you're reading some stuff today, and I said, "Good Lord, I'd expect you to live." So you can't, you can't mix watermelon, cantaloupe, and and, and honeydew melon, and cut them up, put them in the same bowl, eat them, because they don't all digest at the same rate. <laughs> my <laughs> gracious. How do you know that? She was reading it over blind today. I mean, they don't digest at the same time. It's 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 telling it's you telling you that things will not digest when you're when you have an uh, underactive thyroid. Oh, okay. That these things won't digest together. Oh wow! But anyway, it's it's got so many things on there, and and actually one of them I have not told anybody this. The last three months I've been having something happen to me that. I did not understand, and I thought I was going crazy. And my nerves have been terrible. 
that I would lay in bed at night and I felt like there was a mouse or a rat running between the mattress and the box springs. Mm. And I would get up and look and see if my little dog was under the bed. <laughs> and I finally felt it in the car a couple of times. And I, I was driving. And that was just in the last couple of weeks. But when I read these articles on it, started studying it, it says that you will have waves going through your body. There was waves going through your body. And that made me understand why I felt like there was something between my mattress and box springs just, you know, running through there. And why I felt it in the car. And I thought I was going crazy, but I wouldn't tell anybody because I, was, I thought they put me in a nut house. <laughs> It's, it's got them, some things that I've, I've really found out I want to, you know, got to work on and I, you know, what I can eat and what I can't eat and stuff. So well, y'all be praying for me because I'm like. <laughs> you can do it. You'll be long suffering. You'll do it. She In six that. weeks, they're going to retest me. Well, here's, here's, I can go on. I'll probably lose more weight than she will on that diet. Look, <laughs> here's, the, here's what you need this last one. Wise. Wisdom. That's what I. <laughs> Anybody got anything about wisdom? I think that everything that has come before that probably um, probably needs to go into that wise so that you yeah. make better decisions. You yes. have to be patient. You have to be compassionate and merciful and fair and righteous and and have uh, a temperament towards being holy as you think he would want you to be in order to make wise decisions or choices. That's a good answer. That's a real good answer. That is good. You because know, like this, the Bible says you reap what you sow. That, that first one said holy. I thought it said H O L. No, what happened was <laughs> no. What happened was I was trying to get my printer to work. You know he was reading something. I was trying. I was trying. I was typing. I was typing. I was trying to get my printer to work, and I saw it. And I said, I hope I have. A, I hope I just have it set up with H O L in there, and it was. I said, I already made thirty three copies. So it's all right. I said, because nobody was saying anything about the Stephen. But you know he had to bring it up. I said, nobody was saying anything about the Stephen. So it'll be all right. And, oh, oh, no, no. I said, I said Stephen and Eddie. You ought to see that stuff our prison minister sends out. He sends out text, not say. He does not know how to spell period. His spell check is definitely speaking in a foreign language. Okay, so anybody got any more? We're going to talk about some more next week. Does this make sense? This is this this is part of our purpose in life. Is everybody's purpose? Every Christian. This is part of every Christian's purpose is to live this way. We're always talking about what you're going to do, preaching and teaching, all that. Before you be preaching and teaching, when you do this, you are preaching and teaching. All right. Everybody happy? If you're happy, you know what? Say amen. Y'all shake these bowls out and use them again next week? Yeah, sure. Let's pray. Father, we love you. We praise your name. We thank you for this night. We thank you for this opportunity to be in your house, God, to study about your, your word and you and, and how we can live to please you and ask you right now, Lord, to minister mighty to us and through us. Father, help us, Lord, this week, Lord, to examine our own self, Lord, work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. And... And watch what you can do in our lives when we start living like you want us to. In the name of Jesus, we pray. In the church, say Amen. Amen.